Hey guys, I hope you're doing great. This video is going to be an updated version of my last one, Basics of Photopea, and I'm going to be doing the same thing, but maybe going in depth with uh, different things than last time. So let's get to it. The first thing you always want to do is you want to know how to make a new document, obviously. This is very important, but it's really simple. So all you have to do is you want to go up to File, New, and right here is where you can choose the width, height, and the name. So YouTube thumbnail size, 1280 by 720. So this is what we want to go with. And we can name it anything we'd like. And then once you do that, and there's presets over here you can use, but that's if you don't want to do all the designing. But once you do this, just hit create. From here, you can start working on your new design. We are going to start out by adding some text onto our canvas. And you do that by going over to the text tool right here and then clicking on anywhere on the canvas and you can see a little line pops up and you can type anything you like so we'll type canvas for now and if you want to make it bigger you can highlight it like this by left clicking and dragging over all the text and then going up to here size and then if you click that drop down arrow you can move it up to make it bigger or down to make it smaller so we're gonna make it like this and another way you can also do that is by not having it highlighted and just going up to size and turning it up and down but the only thing is you have to have your layer selected by clicking it on it over here so it knows what's to make bigger yo this is future me don't worry I know you'll get to this point but I'm, I forgot to mention something about the text so you could change the text manually by selecting this up here the size and you could type in whatever number i just i had to mention that because that's important you don't want to always have to use this so that's all i had to say all right next thing we're going to make this text look a little better so i'm going to move it down to the center by left clicking on it and dragging it until the red bars pop up on the top and bottom so there you go now you're going to double click on your layer your text layer over here and this menu should pop up so this is where you're going to do all of your different like um stroke and change the color of it this is where all that's going to go down so we're going to start out by changing the color we're going to keep it we're going to make it red so you can check that box to enable it and then click on that box and here's all the options you have you can turn the opacity down change the blend mode which i would just leave normal and then right here is where you can change the color and you can move it anywhere you want. So yeah, that's what we're gonna, we're gonna leave it there for now and we'll come back to it. Now we're gonna change the font of it because this is not a very exciting font. So what you wanna do is click your text tool and left click from the left of the text. Make sure you click the text and then drag it all the way over. And up here, you can see a little drop down arrow next to the font. You just wanna click it and you have access to all of these fonts for free. Um, you can, I think you can download your own as well. You can import them from other websites, but that'll have to be in a different tutorial if you guys want to see that. So I'm going to choose a font real quick and then I'll come back. I decided on this one called like Candel. I don't know, but that's what it looks like. So we're going to go with that. But once you find it, you just want to click on it and go up here to the check mark to confirm it. And there you go. Fonts changed and it looks good so far. Now I'm going to show you how to get import an image from online and show you how to get rid of a background if it has one, like a white one. So first you want to find your whatever logo or whatever you want to put on your thumbnail. And you can see right here I got it. And you could either save it to your computer or you could right click on it. Go down to copy. Go back to your photo P. And then click somewhere, anywhere, just to get back in that tab. And then type, click Control and V. And it should pop up. Or you could right click, I think. No, you cannot. Okay, so. Yeah, alright. Control V, paste, Control C, copies. In case you didn't know that. So, notice how there is a white background behind it. If I could get rid of the background. So, you don't want that, obviously. So it's actually really easy. I showed it in one of my most recent videos, how to get rid of it, but I'll show you right now. Okay, so what you wanna do first is you wanna click the layer that you're trying to get rid of the white background. So that would be layer one over here. 
left click on that make sure your wand tool right here so go to your toolbar it should be this one right under the lasso tool right click on that and if it's not selected make sure it is by going down and clicking on it now we have the magic wand selected you want to go over to the white part left click on it and you can see it gets highlighted around here that's good that's what you want all you have to do is hit backspace or delete and there you go it's done and you notice how the lines are still there so easy fix you just have to hit control and d to deselect and that's all it is it's right there boom easy right so if you want to make a circle just like this to maybe put behind it change the color a bit for whatever reason i'm going to show you how to do that right now as well so go down here on your toolbar there should be a square or something of the sort you want to right click on it and you can see all the shapes you could choose from so we're going to do an ellipse left click on that and just hit okay or you could change the dimensions if you really know what you're doing and there it is right down there so we're going to click on our move tool move it up so you can see it and notice how it's not big enough like we want it to be bigger so how we're going to do that we're going to go up here to edit retransform that's how you edit the size of everything that you want you can move it like this but say you want it to be even so you want to hold shift while you drag it and you can move it over to pair the size so hold shift i'm not going to be perfect but there you go and you notice how they're still white so we could do what we did before see if you can do it pause the video see if you can get rid of that little white part right there if you remember and if you don't want to that's fine follow along you want to click your magic wand go over to the layer left click on it and hit delete there you go i mean of course it's kind of you can see white and stuff um but don't worry about that it really just depends on the image you get this is probably a low res image so it's as expected but you know how to do it now so that's awesome because you will use that a lot at least i do so next we're going to move on to the brush tool now I have not messed around with the brush tool too much, but I could tell you the basics of it to get you started and you could teach yourself maybe, or I'm sure there's other tutorials, uh, or I could even make a more in depth one if you'd want that. But so you just want to left click on it over here on your toolbar brush tool, and you can see a little circle where you could draw. So say you draw something and you want to get rid of it, just hit control and Z to go backward. Or I'm sure there's a peer, yes, yeah, step backwards, step forward, undo reader. You could do those too, but control Z works just as well. So where do we start? Let's start by changing the size of it. So up here you can see a little circle with a number under it. You just want to click that drop down arrow to the size. You can make it bigger and you can see right here how big it is. So well, let's see, let's make it as big as this one or about as big. That's about right, whatever. So you can change the size, you can change the hardness. The hardness is basically like how strong it is. Like you can see it kind of fades out like a gradient, but if the hardness is all the way up, it'll just be a solid. That's what I was trying to say, a solid. So let's go back, control Z, control Z, control Z, control Z, control Z, or over here you can see your history and you could click exactly where you want to go. We're gonna make it smaller. Hardness 100, you could change the opacity of it, which is how much the color shows. And I want that to be on 100, so it's a deep red. The flow, if you turn that down, you can see that it makes it stuttery, like multiple circles at a time versus just a flow, a nice flow, which is a solid like that. Smoothness, pretty self-explanatory. Just how smooth the drawing is. Um, the lower it is, the more smooth it is. All right, so I'm going to show you an easier way. I did tell you about it earlier, but I'm going to show you exactly how it works. So notice how there's all this crap on it. I just want to get rid of it. It's annoying. Whoa, okay. Uh, you want to go over here to the right, and you can see all these brush tools. This is all the times I use the brush tool. All you want to do is go up to the last one before that, and boom. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. All right, so... We're gonna move on now to the lasso. This is probably one of my favorite tools. 
it's really easy to use there's different ways to use it and i'm going to show you those ways so first off you have the regular lasso this is pretty self-explanatory once i show you you'll know how it works so you just want to left click and drag and you can see it. it's like drawing freely like your mouse whatever your mouse is doing that's where it's drawing you can draw wherever you want and just let go and it'll connect it and you can see it's selected so that means whatever you delete in that layer will be gone so we're gonna hit delete and it's gonna delete part of that layer you see the red still there because it wasn't selecting that layer but if you hold shift and click the other layer they're both selected now so if I had delete Okay, I guess it doesn't work, but you could do it individually one at a time. It removed whatever, and you could move it around. See, it's like cut out. That's basically what that does. That cuts out anything if you want to get it out of an image. Like if I don't want the C, right? I'm like, yeah, I don't want that. I just draw over it, hit delete. Once you click that layer, it has to be rasterized. Great. So you want to rasterize it, you got to right click on it, find rasterize boom and then hit delete there you go now you can do it pretty cool that's what that one does now we're going to move on to the polygon polygonal lasso select this one works the same way but instead of drawing it by holding the left click you click one click at a time so left click left click left click left click left click it's more precise and then you connect it and now when you hit delete there you go it does the same thing that's if you want to be more efficient with it and you can get multiple clicks to make it, uh, like, I don't know, whatever. We're going to move on to the last one now, magnetic lasso select. This one I don't use too much, but pretty easy to use. You just hold left click and you can see it kind of goes around it instead of you having to map it out yourself, which it can be really useful. But personally, like I don't really use it that much because it's kind of weird. Like you can see right here, it doesn't really work that well, at least in my case. But that's what the lassos do. You'll use them a lot if you do what I do. And that's that. Now we're going to move on to the eraser tool. So you can see right here in your toolbar, it looks like an eraser. You just want to click that and you can see a little thing like the brush tool. It's too small though. So we're going to go up here, drop down menu, turn the size up like we did with the brush. So now it's bigger. And as it says in the name, this erases things. So you want to hold left click and you can see it erases it so pretty useful but i did not mean to do that whatever pretty useful but i don't use it personally i'm sure you guys would but i don't know i haven't really had a situation where i needed it but let's deselect this as well now the last thing we're gonna do we're gonna make the text look a little nicer and you could see if you want a more in-depth version of how to make text look cool you could see my video uh, that says uh, it's titled like how to make awesome looking text you could just check that out and uh, I go more in depth in it but I'm gonna teach you some of it right now all right so you want to find your text layer and right now it says ambi that's pretty cool uh, that's not my name but you know what happened to it so you want to double click on that layer and this box pops up just like in the beginning but now we're gonna make this a little more advanced so go down to gradient check that box and then uncheck color overlay because it overpowers the gradient and it will not show the gradient. So you want to uncheck that. Now only the gradient is showing, so that's good. Right now, when you click the overlay, you're going to see all these settings. And I'm sure it's pretty daunting, but don't worry. It's really not. It's, it's pretty easy. So all you really want to worry about is the gradient. If I click on that little box, you can see the colors. So there's the left to the right, which is really up and down left being down so if you want to double click that box to change the color change it to red you can change it to green blue pink red whatever you want so we're gonna do red so it's red to white the white kind of fades into the background we don't want that so we're gonna change this to let's do like an orange so look at that it's pretty cool now once you do that make sure you hit okay and you can change the scale which shows how much like you can see it's like really like flat and we don't want that we want it to fade up hence the name gradient the last thing i forgot to mention as well is how to export it so uh you just want to go up to your file right up here at the top 
go down to export as and you could choose whatever one pngs for like transparent backgrounds jpegs for like pictures etc etc we're gonna go jpeg make sure the quality is turned all the way up because you want it to be really good looking and you can see a preview of it and then once you do that just hit save and there you go in your downloads that's really all there is to it that's all you really need to know to get started i hope this helped you guys um, leave down in the comments below what else you want to see because I really have no ideas. Uh, maybe I could do an in-depth guide, an updated one of that because I made one like two years ago and maybe it's outdated. I don't know if it'll be changing constantly. So thank you guys for watching and I hope you have a good one. See ya.